All right, so we are here for episode three in this three-part series known as Refinishing Grammy's Dough Box. I did not have an original soft opener for this episode because I didn't anticipate that it was going to be a multi-episode um, series. I didn't realize that I was going to have to have a whole episode dedicated to finishing and polyurethane and paint sprayers and all the things you're about to learn about in this episode. I hope you enjoy. All right, so we have made it to finishing day. Finishing day is the day you get to put your finish on your project and call it done. My goodness, we're here. So what we are gonna be doing is we, what I'm gonna do with this particular project is put a type of polyurethane or varnish on it called Hal Halcyon Clear, Halcyon Clear, Hal something something. It's also called Total Boat. Um, this is, like I said, a polyurethane rugged clear satin varnish. I love this stuff. Love, 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 love. Um, I have, I started using it about a year ago and I have used it on every project I've had since I started. Um, it is clear satin is my particular favorite um, finish of this total boat but it does come in other um, high gloss that type of thing finishes as well. Um, it is a polyurethane and this stuff is just about bulletproof. Um, not actually bulletproof disclaimer of course. But we put it, um, we used it to coat all of our work tables. And let me tell you, we have put these work tables through it and they come out on the other side like it wasn't no big deal. Paint, stain, all kinds of stuff. And by the time we get around to actually cleaning these benches, which I will admit we don't really do all that often, um, stuff just comes right off of it. It, it. it is so resistant. I've used it on some of my furniture projects. I really, really like it. Now it says that it is a satin varnish. I will tell you that it pretty much takes on um, the finish of the product that you're using. And by that I mean when I've used this satin finish on a um, satin paint, it has come out with a very satiny, velvety, beautiful texture. When I've used it on a high gloss paint, it came out with more of a high gloss finish. So it does tend to take on the finish of whatever product you're using underneath it. So I think on this particular product or project, because it is a stain and it is natural wood, it's gonna come out very satiny, velvety, and beautiful. What I also like about it is that you can water it down. Now, this comes into play for me because typically with most all of my projects, I use paint sprayers. Um, I either use paint sprayers to apply paint or I use a paint sprayer to now apply my total coat finish. And the reason I do that is just because it's convenient. Um, it works really quickly. It cuts my finishing time into like a third by using a paint sprayer. Now I realize that I am privileged that I have access to a um, air compressor, which is what you need in order to use a paint sprayer as an air compressor. So I'm lucky that I have access to one, that me and my husband have a shop that is equipped with one, um, as well as the airline hoses. So I recognize my privilege in having access to these. You absolutely do not have to have a paint sprayer in order to use Total Boat. You can absolutely use brushes to apply this. Um, foam brushes is actually what I used in the very beginning because I didn't really trust that it would go through my paint sprayer and not ruin it. Um, for those who are interested in using a paint sprayer, you do have to water down the product that you put in it or it will clog your paint sprayer. Um, which will render your paint sprayer useless. So that's why I really like Total Boat because you can water it down a little bit and be confident that it is not going to clog and ruin your paint sprayer and there by extension the finish on your product. Project. You do have to kind of squish this bag around. I kind of compare it to those like peanut butter packets that you can get at the grocery store that kind of get like, you know, the peanut butter gets in one end and the, and the honey gets in the other end. You kind of have to like smush it around and get it together. Excuse the beeping from my other camera. So um, it does recommend that you shake the bag for five minutes before you use it. I've never done that. 
much busy. I don't have time to shake a bag for five minutes. It's just my personality. I will never make that a priority. But I have found that if I squish this baby around, squish, 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 um, and shake, 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 shake for a couple of minutes, it does just fine for me. That being said, we're gonna move on to our pneumatic paint sprayers. I love these babies. I use Big Bertha Purple all the time, all the time. Um, I love her, she's my favorite. She is great for big projects where you're gonna be doing a lot of surface area. We might end up actually using both paint sprayers for this project. Um, we'll get to the reason for that here in a minute. The other paint sprayer, both of these are central line. Um, they are sold, let's see, Max Inlet Pressure. No, that's not it. Um, I have the box over here. I think Central Pneumatic is the brand. Now, the reason I have these, they sell these at Harbor Freight um, and they are reasonably inexpensive. I think the big, I think Big Bertha Purple costs like 30 or 35 bucks. So in the world of paint sprayers, these are inexpensive. They do the job really well. I have never been dissatisfied. The only time I've ever had an issue with one of these is when I didn't clean her out properly and she got a little clogged here in the end. Not the paint sprayer's fault, that was my bad. Um, I've actually been using this paint sprayer for almost two years now and haven't had to replace it, but my sweet husband, when he bought me and surprised me with these paint sprayers, he bought me a second backup just because they're inexpensive enough um, that if you can afford it, and again, if you are in a, in a position like me where you can do it, um, it's nice to have one on hand to have an extra just in case your favorite paint sprayer kicks the bucket one day and you have to have a different one. Um, so this is what the box looked like at least two years ago when I got it. Um, and they have worked really, really well for me. So again, they also have the little guy. Now, little guy I use, um, I'll probably actually start off with this little guy. Reason for that is, is because when you're doing these coats, um, when you put a coat on, you need to wait for it to dry before you apply the second coat. Now, because we're watering this down a little bit, it actually dries relatively quickly. It'll dry in 10 to 15 minutes. But with this Total Boat product, um, I have found, that was when I actually clogged Big Bertha Purple um, because I let the polyurethane sit inside of it. because so I was like, eh, I'll be back in 15, 10 minutes um, and it'll be fine. And that's when she got clogged in the end. So you put your coat on, you do as much of your work as you can while you're doing that. Put your coat on, um, come back. And then after you do your coat, you have to wash this out. It is a pain, um, but even with all the washing out, it still, I would say, cuts my finishing time in half, if not more. So this is where we are. Um, I can't remember exactly where I was going with that. Oh, so that's why I'll probably use a little guy um, when we get started because when we start, I'm gonna be focusing on the inside of the dough box and then that being the inside of the lid and the inside of the box itself. And then once we get two coats of that on, then I'm gonna flip the dough box upside down and concentrate on the whole body of it and in that situation, I'll probably use Big Bertha Purple. But to get started out, we'll start with Little Guy um, because Little Guy will hold plenty for us to be able to do this. And then we won't have as much waste. That's where Little Guy comes in handy is when you're doing a little project, you don't wanna waste very much. Um, but again, that being said, that doesn't mean that you can't use Big Bertha Purple um, for a small project. You just have to wash it out and she's a little bit more complicated to wash out because she's got more surface area. Moving right along, the other things that you're gonna need in order to finish your project this way are gonna be some cups for the diluting. You're gonna need some stir sticks. Um, I just use, we just buy bulk boxes of tongue depressors um, and bulk boxes of these disposable um, cups, which I realize is not super eco-friendly and my your hippie sister i am a self-proclaimed hippie but um sometimes you just you gotta use disposables it's a time sensitive situation um you also need filters these filters are incredibly important it keeps debris from getting into your paint sprayer um debris can be in your water debris can be in your paint debris can be in your your total boat if it's got like a like a um like a 
polyurethane booger on the inside of it. So everything that you put inside your paint sprayer goes through a funnel first. I cannot stress that enough. That is the second easiest way to clog up your paint sprayer. First being not cleaning it out, second being not using your filter. These are TCP Global um, 190 micron filters. We buy these in bulk too. Last thing you're gonna need is some just regular rubbing alcohol. I just, again, buy several bottles of the typical, ugh, brain, come on. Um, why can't I think of it? The thing that you have, that you keep around, that has all the band-aids and stuff in it. Whatever. First aid, haha. <laughs> Typical first aid rubbing alcohol, that's what I use. Um, you're gonna use this at the very end of your project to fully clean out your paint sprayer. You're gonna clean it out with water first and then you're gonna follow it with the alcohol. Very important, helps dry everything out. Again, helps prevent clogs. So, I think, ha, thought of one more thing. The other thing um, that you that is very important when you're doing your finishing, and I should have stressed this also when you're doing your staining, is ventilation, ventilation, ventilation. You will absolutely give yourself headache. You will get tired. You will, you know, these things will happen if you do not properly ventilate your work area. Um, by that, typically for me, it's pretty easy because I work in a garage. I just open up the door. That's that's how I have it right now. Um, I do have a tarp up. You will see that. That is mostly to protect. Our vehicles from the total boat because I don't and and paint in general when I'm doing a paint project because um, I don't want random sprays of paint and total boat on my vehicles but other than that um, that's the main thing it is also recommended to wear a ventilator I will admit I did not wear a ventilator when I was putting on the stain um, take for that what you will that may be an OSHA violation or something that I didn't wear but I will sometimes wear a ventilator when I apply the polyurethane total boat if I feel like I'm not getting good ventilation in the area that I am in and also you just don't want to breathe chemicals you just don't want to breathe them um the other thing I meant to mention for those who are dough box purists um, most dough box purists people don't like to use polyurethane on their projects. Total Boat is food safe. That's why they tell, call it Total Boat because they will literally use this on every surface of a boat. They'll use it on the inside, they'll use it on the outside. Anything wooden inside a boat gets Total Boat on it most of the time if that's what that company happens to be using. So food safe means that it's safe for me to use on my dough box project. I also have no intention of using a knife ever again on this particular dough box, so I don't have to worry about the total boat getting cut off, even though, like I said, this stuff is basically like liquid concrete, um, so I would be very, very surprised if this was penetrable by anything that I would put on top of this dough box. That being said, I should also add, this is not an ad for total boat. I am not sponsored. The only sponsor I have in my life is my husband. Um, who pays my bills <laughs> um, so not sponsored by total boat not an ad this is just a genuine I love this product here it is use it if you want to use a polyurethane that is amazing now let's get started another thing I forgot to mention it is super helpful to have some kind of wash basin or tub um, I will frequently just use like a cheap um, storage tote, you know, from Walmart or whatever, or from a big box store and just spray into that. Because when you get started spraying, you want to spray into something, um, to make sure that your paint sprayer and everything is working properly, obviously, before you spray your project. Again, another mistake that I have made in the past, I got too excited, just went right for the project and then had like weird water spots and yeah, anyway. So you will see me do that, that's why. Okay, so we are back. Now, what we are gonna talk about here is air pressure. If you are using your pneumatic paint sprayer, you are gonna be using an air compressor and therefore we'll have to deal with air pressure. The way that you deal with this is with an air pressure valve. So the ideal air pressure for what we're gonna be doing is gonna be between about 20 and 30 PSI. 
25 is ideal, but you know, we're talking about um, press, air pressure, so it's not always exact. The way that you set that is you're gonna start with, when you squeeze your trigger, you are at almost zero, okay? This is how you're gonna be accurate in how much pressure you've got on your valve. You're gonna start tightening your valve and checking that air pressure. Starting to get a little movement. And what you're looking for is 20 to 30 PSI when you pull the trigger, okay? So right now, we are still at pretty much zero. I'm gonna start cranking it up a little bit. Now we're at about five. So when I pull back, it moves to about five. Start cranking down a little bit more. And you're gonna see the nozzle start to move to over 20 to 30 PSI. That's okay, because like I said, we're looking for 20 to 30 PSI when we pull the trigger. That's gonna give us a nice, good, pressurized, even spray. Okay. That's where we are about at. Okay. I like to use a vise to hold my ooh, paint sprayer when I'm not using it. Which sometimes is located across the shop. Just depends on where my husband left it last based on what he thinks works the best. This is sometimes a drawback of sharing a shop with a spouse. Although, there are obviously a lot more pros than cons. It's just all part of the folksy charm that is us sharing our shop. Okay, so I've got my paint sprayer, handy dandy vice over here that my husband built. show you how to dilute the paint now or not the paint sorry the total boat or as we like to call it at our house boat coat We've got our cup get our boat coat Give a good shake again total boat oh and I just realized silly me I said I was gonna use a little guy instead of big Bertha big Bertha purple so I gotta change this out I actually really hate using pressurized air um, it makes me really nervous it just triggers my anxiety for whatever reason I do also put plumber's tape around this join um, to help the join seal be a little bit better. Okay. Now, this is going to affect our PSI. We'll deal with that. That's fine. Because the paint sprayer is smaller. over 30 so when you are higher than you want to be you actually have to bleed the valve and go all the way back down to zero now we're at zero when we squeeze the trigger and start slowly building that air pressure back up like we talked about it was a little quicker with little dude a little more sensitive my little man there we go Okay. Okay. 
back to the total boat. We are then going to add a little water. Now, I eyeball this because I've done this enough that I kind of know the consistency, the viscosity of how much water I want to put in with the total boat to get the sort of watery texture, or I should say less viscous texture that I want. Ooh, that might've been a little bit too much water. That's okay. Yeah, that's good. Now, the instructions on the total boat do say that it does, it should not, quote unquote, should not require any watering down before going into a paint sprayer. I just do it out of force of habit. I figure it doesn't hurt. I'm going to go through. Now, before we put our total boat in the paint sprayer, we need to make sure a couple of components are working properly. One of those being, you want to make sure that your little in machine filter is in the machine. I've done that before and again gotten clogs because it's not, because it let debris get through. Sometimes I am guilty, I get in a hurry. I don't want to pay attention, don't want to go slow, don't want to go through all the proper steps that I should before getting started and that's what happens. Speaking of not going through the proper steps, oh good grief, I should have run water through this before I put the total boat in it. That was my bad, gets everything loose and going, but can't separate the salt from the sugar. It's already in there. So we'll get going. And just make sure everything's moving properly with the machine itself instead of doing what we should have done, which is to run water through it first. Ugh, I'm so irritated at myself that I did that, but that's how it goes. As so often happens, I was reminded um, of some reasons why I continue to use Big Bertha Purple, um, even when it doesn't seem to make the most sense logically it, in the beginning, but it's because A, she is a bigger sprayer, so she has a bigger spray spread, meaning I can be farther away from the project when I'm working on it, which for me comes in really handy because I wear glasses. Um, and with the smaller sprayer, I have to be closer to the project to get the application correct. Um, and then I end up, um, getting blowback on my prescription glasses, which is not great. And at this current moment, um, I don't have any safety glasses that fit over my regular glasses, which is an oversight on my part. But so I'm switching back to Big Bertha Purple so I can be farther away and hopefully not ruin these prescription glasses that I love so much. Y'all remember me telling you that it was a good idea that if you can afford it to have a backup pneumatic sprayer. I went to go fill up um, and use Big Bertha Purple and I could not for the life of me get anything but air to come out the other end, which meant that there was a clog somewhere in the pipes and I just don't have time for it today. I've had this issue a couple of the last times trying to use Big Birth Purple and good freaking grief, I'm over it. So we're moving on to the new purple sprayer.
tell you guys, confessional. It's confessional time. I'm trying to wrap up this project so I can get some content out, get my YouTube video start or channel started. And I was trying to embody my inner Adam Savage, one of his um, things that he has said in the past that I really, really love is that artists don't always wait for inspiration. In fact, they rarely wait for inspiration. Professional artists just get up and do work every day. And some of that work is really good and some of it is just okay and that's okay and we all have to move forward. But if you don't get in the shop and you don't do the work, um, then you're always going to be behind. You're never going to be meeting the timelines you want to meet, et cetera, et cetera. So I tried today to push past my I don't feel like doing this today stuff um, and get out here and do some work. And I'm, I'm making mistakes. It's, you know, I, I am new to filming um, and to doing, trying to do this as a profession instead of just a hobby. Um, I'm still working out the kinks of that and the emotions of that and etc. So um, when I put on my finishing coats of whatever it may be, um, if it is a polyurethane type finish, not a wax, then I sand in between. Um, and what that sanding does is it gets rid of any little bumps that might be in the finish. Um, which inevitably always happen no matter what you do there are always little bumps with the wax it's not as big a deal because it'll get used and it'll I don't want to say rub out but it'll <laughs> it'll go away with time and use with a polyurethane you have to address that before you put on your final coat or you'll have bumps on your finished product so I was just doing a quick sand down of things um, and I managed to sand away some of the finish um, or some of the stain I'm trying to get this in a way that the light will catch it on that corner I managed to sand away the stain because I'm an idiot and I was moving too fast I did it as well on this edge although with the shadowing I don't know if you'll be able to see it as much but it's really bad and it's really evident on this edge over here where that stain just got stripped off because I was moving too fast and that was with a 400 grit sandpaper, which is a very fine grit sandpaper. So I'm frustrated. Um, I'm going to now have to put a very, 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 very as thin as possible light coat of stain on that edge. And I'm, I'm not 100% sure how it's going to go because I've never had to do this before. Um, yeah so and there's already a coat of the of the um total boat polyurethane on it so i have no idea how this is gonna go and i'm really frustrated but i'm just gonna go in with some of that dark red oak and just see if i can do essentially like a little patch job on this edge um and then i'm just gonna put a final coat of polyurethane on it i'm not gonna spend more time doing like a third coat because a third coat really isn't necessary um truth be told with this product two coats is sometimes also not completely necessary um i just do it for the principle of the thing i suppose anyway um this is just part of the process you're gonna get frustrated you're gonna make mistakes you're gonna have to redo things. I already made a mistake on this project and I think that's part of why I'm so incredibly frustrated um, because I already made a mistake where there was some wood glue that got, it like ran down the edge of the leg and I didn't sand it off. I, I didn't sand it off. And so when I did the stain, it didn't take the stain because wood glue doesn't take stain. Here is an example of that that I'm talking about and sometimes I mean it actually looks worse on camera than it does in person when you look at it from far away it's not crazy noticeable I might try um, to fix it at a later date but you know what? this is an antique piece of furniture and sometimes when stuff like this happens me and my husband just chalk it up to what we call folksy charm and we just let it be a folksy charm part of the piece 
So, but that's why I'm, I'm double frustrated um, about this latest mistake because I feel like I'm rushing and I'm not taking the time that I should because I'm trying to get this content out and get it to you guys. And um, you don't really have much else to say. Anyway. I'm just gonna do like the teeniest, tiniest little strip of stain here. See if we can get this corner back to looking like maybe a professional did it. And we'll see what happens. I don't know. I'm not super optimistic that this is going to go my way. And I did actually genuinely consider uh, just leaving it and letting it be more folksy charm. Make it look like a little bit of maybe wear on the edge, like natural wear, because it does kind of look like natural wear. <sighs> but it's not even, it's not uniform throughout the whole piece. So. I decided not to let it stand um, to try to fix it. So here we are. Try to keep it from dripping down. Just like that down. I mean, to be completely honest, I'm not super happy with how that looks either. What can I say? Shit happens. And this might be one of those situations where I tried something and you know what, it looked better before I messed with it. So now we have a dark edge instead of a light edge that looked like natural wear. Now we have an edge that looks painted. I'm not super happy with that either. Maybe we'll hit it with the sandpaper again. The nemesis that caused this problem. But, let's see how we feel about that. I don't know. I do not know. I've never had to do this before. What I don't want is to, for it to look like there's a drip. And that's what it's now starting to look like, is that there's a drip. Ugh. And this may be a lesson in never again will I allow myself to feel pressured to work on a day when I don't feel like working. It's not like going to an office job sick. Like, girl, you should have stayed home. Don't let it end today. Yeah, I don't know, I, I kind of really hate the way that looks. No, looks like paint drip. Well, maybe this ugly line on my piece will just serve as a don't go to work sick lesson. Because, yeah, I, I absolutely hate the way that looks, too. So we're going to move on. Hey, y'all. 
as you have previously read, um, I did ultimately end up making the executive decision to go ahead and finish the poly coat on Grammy's dough box off camera. There were a few different reasons for that. Uh, the main reason was because I was hyper focusing on the mistake that I made. I have a tendency to do that, it happens. And I went and got my husband, who is my ultimate cheerleader, and had him come out and look at it and see if he had any recommendations on what to do without just completely stripping that side of stain off and starting over. And he very graciously pointed out to me that it really wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. And, you know, it, it just, it, we, we were at a place where I was frustrated and I was tired and I was feeling pressured and... I just decided um, that it would be best for all involved if I finished it off camera, including myself. Sometimes that's how it goes. I, I wish that I had finished it on camera for you guys because I do want to be as candid and show you guys as much as I can of what I do and the things that I found that have worked for me um, to help you in your own rehab projects and your own construction projects. But ultimately, at the end of the day, you know, stuff happens and it doesn't always go the way that you wanted it to go. It doesn't always go as planned. And that just felt like the right decision to make at the time. So it's what I did. Um, I hope you still enjoy the final result. I know I do. I love the way that it turned out, especially going back and looking at the before pictures and now looking at it as a finished product. Um, I really love it. I feel really blessed that I inherited it, that I get to be its steward for the rest of my life and then pass it down to another family member. So um, I do have a little pre-recorded blurb, just a summary of the project at the end. I just didn't want to leave you guys with filming you know, of me being really frustrated with this mistake that I made and then hopping right over to, hey, it's finished and here's how it looks. So I wanted to give you all some kind of explanation as to why I ultimately finished the project off camera. Um, I did end up just just sanding it just a little bit more to try to fix that mistake, but um, I decided to just chalk it up to folksy charm. Just more folksy charm with the piece to go with the wood glue that I forgot to sand off before I stained it, you know, those kinds of things. and. I do think that that's part of what makes handmade projects kind of fun um, is, especially when they're your own, is those little mistakes that you have made that you can see it's like part of the journey of the piece and the next person who looks at it and may have to rehab it down the road will see what I did um, and know that somebody's hands touched it and that somebody loved it and cared for it and tried to keep it going and tried to fix it as best as they could. So. Without further ado, uh, I love to say that line, here is the rest of the footage. <laughs> I don't know how to end this. I hope y'all enjoy. Well, y'all, we have made it to the end of project one for Your Hippie Sister Builds. I guess we need to do one of those like summary things that you do at the end of the video. So let's, let's think about what we have learned. We have learned that when you are doing really any type of woodworking with furniture, you're never gonna be done sanding. We learned um, that while the principle of pushing yourself through and doing work on days that you don't necessarily feel inspired is good, it's a good practice to be in, finishing day on a project that you feel emotionally connected to is maybe not the best day to force yourself to work. Um, especially if you are a person who struggles with ADHD and emotional dysregulation. We have also learned that it is absolutely possible to grow up in a typical, what would be considered a typical Bible Belt Texas household and come out on the other side a wonderful, beautiful, um, queer, plus size, feminist, body positive, liberal Texan. So us, us liberal Texans, we do exist out here in the world. It is also a good idea to sand off glue before you stain. And what else have we learned? 
that filming yourself takes a lot longer than you think it's going to. I kind of figured that's how it was going to be, but whoo, and I haven't even gotten to the editing part yet. Uh, but this was a fun little build. It really was. It was a fun, quick project. I'm really happy with it. It was an emotional project for me because it belonged to my Grammy and she loved that thing. Um, and I am genuinely happy with the way that it turned out. It's got some folksy charm still. It still looks like an antique piece of furniture. It's just been given a little refresh, that's all. I love the idea that not everything is reborn. Some things are just rebloomed. Um, and yeah, I think that about sums it up. So let's roll on to, uh, you know, taking a look at the final whatever. I don't want to seem like I'm copying other YouTube channels, but let's go ahead and take a look at um, the end product with some fancy camera angles and nice lighting and a little staging. Roll that beautiful end footage. Haha, -ha, just kidding. Before we roll that beautiful end footage, um, I just wanted to say thank you all for following along. If you like what you see, please, please, please like and subscribe. Hit that notification button so that you can be notified every time I drop new content and so that hopefully I'll get some followers and some sponsors and we can make this a full-time gig. Um, thank you again. And now for the final roll that beautiful end footage. <laughs> As you have previously read hey y'all so have you as as hey y'all have you as I can't get them out hey y'all as you have previously read <laughs> <laughs> 